Hello, how you doing? This is Bruce. Today, I want to talk to you about something here. Do you know the most popular style of beehive in America is actually the Langstroth? And beekeepers all around the world are using this. Langstroths are great because it's a standardized box with standardized frames. Frames much like this one, okay? These are really good because a frame like this allows you to share resources. I could pull out a frame of brood and eggs from one hive and boost up another hive, or I could share resources with a different beekeeper. There might be somebody in my bee club that has a problem and I could pull out a frame and, and give it to them. Those resources might save their hive. So the Langstroth with its removable frames like this makes a massive advantage to a modern beekeeper. But there's a problem. These frames and all wood are getting really expensive. The price is shot through the roof. Now I buy, normally I buy a box of unassembled frames like this. I get them from either Didant or Man Lake. I like the Didant ones a little bit better just because the, the way the holes are in, on the sides. And then, just for me, I add the fishing line strings and I'll beeswax in a little guide to help the bees draw a straight comb. But these frames, the cost has gone crazy over the last year or so. What if I could make frames for free? What if I could turn scrap 2x4s from a construction site dumpster into frames. Well, today we're going to talk to a fellow who's doing that. All right. So. Okay, so continuing on talking about frames. I'm over here with a gentleman named Chris, and he is a heck of a lot better woodworker than I am. So Chris, I'm going to introduce you and let you go ahead and, and talk a little bit about what you're doing out here today. All right, so I'm recently gotten into the beekeeping hobby. Um, it is an expensive hobby to get into, and if there's any way to cut down costs, I'm looking to try to do that. I've recently picked up a whole bunch of wood scraps. A lot of these come from, this all comes from one construction yard. If you go while the guys are working there, you can ask them anything in the dumpster or anything off the side that are cutoffs. A lot of times they'll just tell you, take whatever you need, as long as you don't take from their stock that they're currently using. Right, right. This all came from one location. Um, none of this is pressure treated. This is all regular intern that they use inside the house for framing. Uh, it's all two by stock. I got two by fours and I got two by sixes. Um, I did collect lengths that are maybe 12 inches. These are actually good for sides and doing small, uh, medium sides and deeps. And then the longer ones like these, I keep for top and bottom frames that I end up cutting out like that. I also have a couple jigs that I've made. Um, my first jig, and this is for the sides, not for the top and bottom, because top and bottom you can just do on the table saw with your fence and that. I screwed a piece of wood, uh, two by stock, to my um, cross cut. And I also dadoed out two spot, well, a couple spots on here. This spot, I actually take a piece of wood wedge it in here, and I can take my 2 by stock, and while I have it in here, I can put my 2 by stock, cut it here, run it across, and this is the exact length that I need for the medium frames. For the deeps, I change the slot location to here, and again, the same thing, I cut it, and it's now the length that I need for the deeps. The rest of the process is actually almost identical on how you make the deep and the uh, mediums, except for when it comes to this jig. This jig is set up specifically to do 
this right here, which is the relief, so the bees can get in between the frames. What I end up doing is I'll put my dado stack back in after I have all my pieces cut, and they're going to be just straight length pieces. Put this in. You're going to raise your blade an eighth of an inch. Now, for full deep, I don't have to do anything else. This is already set up. I'll take my piece and I'll actually run it through all the way till it hits here. And then I take it out, flip it over, and again do the same thing. On the jig, I have it set up with just a regular dado insert. And then I uh, glued and pin nailed these two pieces on along with this piece. Also on the inside here, I have an eighth inch strip. And that'll keep, once, or, once this is actually in there, it'll keep it from doing one of these wobbles, which will keep you from getting a cut that's wavy. So after that's in there, to do a medium, again, two by, put that in there like that, cut it, and again, cut it. And this is like, like I said, it's set up to do the mediums, and now the deeps. I'm gonna go through the process of actually making one of the sides. I will go from the very beginning. Uh, we're gonna make, what do you wanna make, some deeps or you wanna make some shallows or mediums? Um, whatever you're comfortable with, what do you need now? Uh, I'm gonna need to make some deeps, so. Let's make some deeps, awesome. Put my uh, regular plate in there and we will grab, grab one that's a wider one, we we'll grab two by six, so we have plenty. Again, scrap piece of two by six. Guys, at the, the place, you want to just make sure that it's longer than your insert here. I'm gonna raise my blade to be above by maybe a quarter of an inch of above the uh, height of the wood. We're gonna take it, and I'm not putting the post in yet. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a nice clean cut because these are rough cuts from the job site. You want a nice clean cut so you can get an even frame all the way with all of them. So here we go. One thing we should talk about too is a little bit of safety. Um, when you're cutting, stay off to the side. Because when you have a piece like this, it can catch and shoot it back at you. And you'll catch one of these in the gut. So I stay off to the side. That sound like experience talking. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> um, the other thing, I have all my digits. I have woodworker friends who don't. I don't wear gloves. A lot of people will tell you you need to wear gloves with woodworking because you get splinters, blah, 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 blah. And it's a safety thing. You wear a glove and you get too close to that blade and it catches the tip of the glove, it's gonna suck your hand into the blade. It's gonna make it much, much worse. Also, safety glasses. Um, these aren't like regular safety glasses, but these are plastic frame safety rated lenses. So, the other thing you gotta know, know where your hands are at all times. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my pin in. Now I can take it. This is the side that we just cut. Right. I'm going to take this. So, now since I have a little bit more meat here, I can get pull onto this piece and pull it away from the blade. Another thing people will do when they're woodworking also is they'll use a push stick. I don't have regular push sticks, I just use scrap pieces and I can push things through. Uh, you'll, you'll see me use push sticks a lot with um, the fence. When I'm using my cross cut, not so much. So now we have this cut to the length that we need for the deeps. Right. So we're gonna take that off to the side, take our, our uh, cross cut out, put that down below. Now we're gonna be changing the blade. First thing you need to do, <laughs> unplug the machine. Right. Now, not a lot of people will have uh, access to dado stacks. I do. 
a lot of times I'll just use a piece of wood to jam in here and I think my belt is slipping just a little bit yep so to remedy that I'll use a clamp I'll place it back here right just to keep that from turning and it doesn't look like I clamped it on tight enough I think it might be time for some new clamps. <laughs> I think I know what I'm going to ask for for Christmas. Now that I got the nuts loose, I can take this off. I don't need to worry about that anymore. When you're taking your blade off, be careful to hold on to the nut, because otherwise it's going to go to the bottom of your table saw and bury itself into the sawdust, which I almost just did. <laughs> well done. Take your washer off, and I can take my blade out. Put my blade off to the side here. Because I'm not using this whole section, I like to leave a piece of wood or something here just as a work shelf. This is a dado stack for people who don't know what a dado stack is. Each of these blades will measure out to a eighth of an inch. So you're gonna take your outer blade, put it in, teeth pointing towards you because the blade spins right. towards you. I'm going to take my other blade out and put it off to the side for a moment. Put this back on so that way I don't lose it. These are spacers in case you need to do 16th and 30 seconds and stuff like that. These are your inner blades. Teeth on these are going to be quarter inch. However, when they overlap, they still only overlap to an eighth of an inch. So now we're at a quarter inch and we need to be at three quarters so we're at half or quarter inch and make sure you have it offset three eighths half inch Five eighths. Now I do have another one here, but I'm not going to use it because that's going to make it too big because we still have to put the outer blade on. And that'll give us our three quarters of an inch. You're going to put your washer back on. And these are reverse thread, so it's not righty tighty, lefty loosey. slight tighten put this back on so I don't lose it and that back down so now we have now we have our data stack on bring it down and I'm gonna use my data stack insert which is basically the same thing that's here without all the extra Looks like I need to clean that out. That's the other thing to make sure that your inserts areas are clean so that way you can put it in there. All flush. Now I'm gonna cheat. Cheating. Because I already have my measurement set here. You can find a lot of um, plans online on how big you need them to be, but typically it's about 3 eighths. So I'm going to bring my blade up to there, and again I'm going to cheat by bringing my insert there, and I'm just going to bring my fence up to where I need it to be. And if you measure it, I believe it's three eighths. Five sixteenths. So it's just below three eighths. 
So now that we have this set, I'm going to go ahead and dado out each end all the way across. A lot of people are going to be like, well, why are you doing that? Because you don't, you don't need the dado until you have the piece. This is going to save me from having to dado each and every single one of these. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this, kick it on, stand off to the side, plug your, your cable saw back in. <laughs> change the blade again. <laughs> we need to go back to the regular blade. So again, gotta unplug safety reasons. Not that I always unplug it because I can't I'm not gonna tell you a lie and say that I unplug it every time. But like you say you do have all your digits. That's a good thing. I do have all my digits. I, I pay very close attention to where the blade is and where my fingers are. So there's the nut, there's the washer. Now, since I'm going to be using these again for the, with this jig, I'm not gonna put them back in the container. I'm gonna keep them accessible. Because I already know exactly where I, what I need for a stack. If you have old table stuff, sometimes it gets to be a pain moving the blades because oh, it's old. <laughs> Again, teeth coming towards you at the top. Slide that in. Washer. little tight you don't have to crank down on it you don't really want to crank down on it and we're gonna put our regular plate back in one of the things that I like to do again I'm gonna bring the blade up to just over I'll bring my fence in just till I'm about right about there so I, I'm gonna cut like a full eighth inch off I do this to clean it up so I have a fresh, clean edge to go off of. Again, plug the table saw in. <laughs> Again, keep an eye on where your hands are at all times. see it gives a nice clean surface that we can work off of we don't have to worry about the tear out that was here anymore um, once we get to this part this is actually going to be waste also so we can take out that and this literally paper thin so <laughs> next again with how wide it is that's going to be the three eighths again we're going to bring the fence in and again i'm going to cheat I just don't consider that cheating. That's the way I do it. <laughs> All right. 
This is where I'll definitely be using a push stick. So I'll usually grab a piece of scrap, or, um, which I thought I had some extra here. Yep. I'll use this as a push stick. Because then I can just run that over. I don't care if I cut into this. I'd rather cut into this than my fingers. Absolutely right. So, take it on. give us one side so far. So I'm going to take these, put them on the opposite side of the fence so they stay out of the way, which I should be doing with this one. stop here on cutting these but you see the process of how we do it and you just keep going all the way to and then once you're all the way to the edge you're gonna when it gets small enough that you don't feel comfortable or you don't want to put your hands there use a second push stick to hold it against the fence so I'm this in lieu of saving time even though we could just edit <laughs> we're gonna fix these to the point where we need to be to do the relief excellent so now we're gonna Slide it back over. Again, we're going to cheat. So this is going to be just under two, uh, one and a half inches. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sixteenths. So one and seven sixteenths, which will give you enough space when you in your hive, you can get your hive tool in, shift it around just a little bit so you can pull it back out. Now if you look at your pieces here, you're going to notice it's going to be a, a thicker and a thinner. You want all your thickers to the outside of the blade, because you want this side to the fence. And again, we're going to lower our fence, just so we only have a few, little bit of teeth coming over. Now this is where a lot of people will say it gets tricky. Not really. Again, I'm watching where my hands are and I'm paying attention to exactly what I'm doing with my fingers. So now we have an even piece. We'll go ahead and do that with the rest. If you don't feel comfortable using your fingers, you can use another push stick. I've been woodworking for quite a while, so I am used to using push sticks in my hands. I know where my hands are at all times. I'll go back to using my hands on this one. All right, so now we have our pieces for her frame sides. And we have the dados cut out. We have them cut to the width that we need and the thickness that we need. Now we need to put the relief in them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in. Again, change our blades. Now your table saw may be different, you might have a tool to specifically for taking off the blade. I prefer a wrench longer. And 
And now we're going to reinstall our dado stack. Now it's a lot easier if you bring it all the way up. Because now your post is right up here instead of further down. Again, you want to offset the blades. Gee, Chris, you do that almost like you've done it before. A few times. So now we're going to re-lower it, because we want to keep it low. And I'll use my dado stack, regular dado stack, so that way when I bring it up, I can tell. Where I need to be. So, another trick you can do. Mark where your teeth are, and you can see where the mark is, that's an eighth of an inch. So now I'll take this step, this insert out, and I'm gonna put my jig in. Again, it's the dado stack set up. You'll probably hear some buzzing noise because there's a little bit of tear out that was in the jig itself. Again, plug it in. <laughs> Now the difficult part with this stops at the end here, take it out, you got your relief. Flip it over. Now you have your relief on both sides. So I'll do another one so we can put them next to each other so you can see. Roughly about a quarter of an inch relief. Um, so the bit, that's plenty of space for the bees to get pumped through. You can increase that if you want by raising your blade. Now, on your first pass, you're fine with just holding it here. You can't do a second pass on it. Because if you do a second pass and you put your weight on it, you're now changing where your cut is at. Right, right. As you can see on this one, I increased my blade height just by a hair, by maybe a sixteenth of an inch, if that. Now we have these sides cut. They're ready to be drilled if you want to have them, the drill holes to put your thread, your line through. Um, if you don't use uh, comb, or not comb, what is it? The foundation. Uh, found plastic foundation. Yeah, plastic cell. Um, or wax. So if I take a top bar that I've already made, these will slide right on. <clears throat> and they're ready for a bottom bar. 
which I have to cut some more because I actually just gave a bunch to the bee club. And your bottom bar will go on there. Like you can use a little bit of glue, put them in there, and then pin nail them. And you'll have your frame. I did it my eighth of inch cut inside, so you can put your uh, popsicle sticks. Some people will put that in there. That's good enough for you to put your foundation in. Um, you can also use thin pieces that if they're less than an eighth of an inch, you can stick those in there just like you would in popsicle sticks. So you have a lot of different options that you can do with that. Awesome. So, any other qu any questions that you, anybody <laughs> might have, you might have for me? Chris, I love how methodically you work here. This is a really good tutorial you're doing here. I like it a lot. I really like these jigs. Do you have much trouble coming up with this design? Actually, if I could find the person that I, I seen one similar to this, but it wasn't as simplified as this one is on a YouTube video, believe it or not. But putting this together literally was, I had my piece here and then I'll, I'll use, I'll use a couple pieces of two by just to, as an example. I took one piece, I had it just go over the edge just a little bit, took my stock, put the other one in, and I pin nailed them to it. And then what I would do, what I did was, I took a small insert, so that way it keeps it from dropping down, and I also marked where the end was gonna be, and that's what this end board is. So when I run it through, it stops at that end board. And these pieces are the side pieces. I kept them low like that just so that way I could keep a good hold of the piece because if it's a, a full two by four, I can't do that. So I just used pieces of scrap plywood, which again, came from one of the construction sites. It was a cut off piece when they were doing the roofing. So I just grabbed some extra pieces and they happened to be just the right thickness for my table cert, this is table saw insert, so I can make a bunch of table saw inserts if I want to. So yeah, this jig wasn't difficult to make. Um, this kind of jig that I put on here, or the two by, I've made a lot of these because I've done a lot of repetitive work um, doing woodworking. Um, I've been making a lot of shadow box frames lately out of the two by stock. Actually, what I've been doing is I've been taking it, running it down the table saw, splitting it, running it through my thickness planer to get it to be half inch thick and smooth on all sides. I'll clean up the edges, basically run like I did when I uh, did the initial side of this to make, give a clean edge. And then what I'll do is, I'll again, I've just been using it as general purpose where I put my piece in there, put it up, and I've been cutting it at a 30 degree angle. So when I put another piece that has a 30 degree angle on it, it comes up to a 60. And I've been making hexagon shadow frames and I've been gluing those together in a honeycomb pattern. My wife has a couple on the wall, um, which if you wanna go in and take a picture and add it to the thing, you can. You can. And uh, apparently people now, a few of them want them as gifts for Christmas. So. That's what I've been using that for. So you don't have to use it just for bee stuff. You can actually, even though it is technically a bee thing, you can use it to make all kinds of different projects. I'm gonna be making a long lane. This is one of my end boards. Uh, this was a two by six, two by six, and a two by four. And I cut a groove, quarter inch wide, put an insert there so that way they stay lined up, they don't warp on each other and they stay together. And then I ran it through my thickness planner to the thickness that I needed it. So now I'm gonna finish doing my dados and rabbits and all that. So that way I can put it together and make a long lane. Really nice. And the long lane that I'm gonna do, I'll have to take some pictures and give it to Bruce or Bruce might have to come over and take another video of it. It's actually gonna be what's called a bee barn. I'm making it as a nice big red barn. I saw, again, I saw a YouTube video where people were making decorative ones. He had a really good idea when you open up the lid because the, the frame of it comes up like this on the roof. On his framing on the inside, he had it spaced out just right where you could take your frames and stick them up inside the, as you're working on them, you can stick them up inside the lid. 
and then take them out and put them back down so you don't have to put them on the ground or put them on a side table. They're just right there, easy reach for you to work on. So, Well, Chris, you are one heck of a woodworker, and I really appreciate you sharing all this with us. Anytime. All right. Well, thanks a lot, and um, so we'll see you soon. See you soon. So Chris is going to show me these uh, shadow boxes he's making. So these are the shadow boxes that I made, again, out of that scrap 2x4 st stock that I made, and I explained that I was putting them down. So I've been making these hex hexagons, frames, when I go to glue them together, I have my 30 degree angle here, so it actually makes a hexagon, tape them together, have them all laid out, glue all the seam at the edges, and I bring them all together, and it will make a frame like this. I did do a cut here on one piece, so that way I can put a nail on the wall, and it stays like that. Oh, okay. So after I have them all sanded, I can take them like this and glue them up, and actually do different patterns. I can do patterns like this, left and right. I can do like this. I can add another piece here. So whatever pattern you decide you want to go with, you can actually set them up any way you want. And you get a nice bee decoration. And this is my wife's wonderful bee wall. So Very she's cool. gotten more into the bees along with me also, although <laughs> she still won't go to the bees and play with them. So. Again, more examples of things you can do with the scrap wood other than just bee frames. Very good. Let me take a look at that if you don't mind. By all means. So. I really like that. That's nice. My wife's figure she got a glitter out. It's a little bee fairy. Nice. 